Thomas Sowell once wrote, the very phrase income distribution is tendentious. Wealth can be created only after capital and labor have reconciled their competing claims and agreed to terms on which they can operate together on the production of wealth. So what happens when a powerful self-proclaimed globalist whose counterparts are responsible for our current system that created massive inequity that we currently find ourselves in today is trying to sell neoliberalism in the name of distribution of wealth, happiness, and health. Hi everybody, I'm Jeremy, and welcome to the Independence Channel and Real Truth. firm interest in my belief that the human emotion controlled by external factors leads to a path in life that presents risk, anxiety, depression, irrational behavior, among many other ingredients that deviate one from their true purpose. I feel that if we truly are to have any idea about who we are, it is important to understand the economic environment in our country as well as globally, for we do share this planet and I for one would like to see a balance between national sovereignty and a global effort to accomplish common goals. And in this process, use technology to globally spread the spirit of sharing ideas to solve our own problems. Before we do that, though, we must correct our own individual ships or put our own houses in order. This comes when we find our courage to overcome our egos and venture into learning about the world of the unknown, which is a world where about 85% of Americans' minds currently resides, according to me. So with the media literally blacking out political and scientific data and information from scientists, doctors, other experts, fabricating events through selective editing and accusing individuals of that which the establishment governments are actually doing themselves, I want to be informed on my own behalf through the diligence of researching and listening to those who are once again attempting to control the world and more importantly, your consciousness and your freedom of thought. So I listen to Klaus Schwab. Klaus Schwab is a founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, who spoke about the obstacles of globalism at the World Economic Summit, the summit in March of 2017. So one of the things that I like to do, um, I want to know about my economic environment. A lot of research is done on socioeconomic factors related to um, inactivity uh, in any population, specifically in urban populations, um, but really the obstacles that come with um, the current environment that we're in. Now, we find ourselves in kind of like a new era where we have things going on, um, you know, uh, uh, fo foreign policy wise for our country in America. We are a globalist community, in a sense, with each country having their own independent sovereignty, right? And so, all of these people that you're going to see at this summit, specifically Mr. Schwab, is recommending that changes need to occur because the inequity is so great that we must change the way we do things. However, these people are the ones who created the system in the first place and their relatives and their relatives and their relatives. So we have this, this hierarchy, all right? We have this hierarchy of individuals who are massively wealthy, they hold the majority of the wealth, and this hasn't even come with democracy. We've been spreading democracy abroad, but this inequity still occurs. This predatory corporate capitalism that occurs when it's unchecked and people don't go to jail for malfeasance and breaking laws, these things tend to repeat themselves and they've used the surveillance um, technocracy to keep the public in check 
to keep them misinformed. And this is kind of the nature of this 2017 forum where you hear the soft spoken old guy from the East talking about how the old way wasn't working. So it's on us to come up with a new way to interact, to make sure that we're healthy, to make sure that, uh, that, that there's equity, that capital is spread through society. These are the same people creating the new system or it's already created. Let's not be naive here. The same people that are sitting in these front rows are the people responsible for wars. They're responsible for not even just the wars, but the drug dealing, the human trafficking, the drug trafficking, the weapons trafficking, all this stuff occurs. And this is what happens when we go to war based on corporate capitalism, maintaining the value of the U.S. dollar. So anyway, getting back to the point, I listened to uh, Klaus Schwab. I want to know about the direction that we're going in globally. I want to learn new languages. I want to make myself more marketable just as a human being. Why is it I only know one language? I mean, I'm learning Spanish. I've, I've, uh, I've started on this quest for Mandarin, which is going to be difficult being on my own and being in our circumstances. But I am very interested in the direction that this, that our economy, our world economy, and our domestic economy is going to go because we deserve to have a foot in the door. We deserve to have a seat at the table. What you're going to see and why I mentioned Thomas Sowell's quote from his book was because these folks are going to talk about redistribution of wealth. But the problem with that is they've already taken the mass amount of wealth. A very small amount of people have wealth and the middle class is being destroyed currently. So we're becoming what um, Dylan Radigan uh, would describe as algorithmically controlled techno-feudal neo-serfs. America will have effectively a massive pool of something very much like easily algorithmically exploited techno-feudal neo-serfs. That's quite a phrase. Holy cow, that's a lot. But that is that is truly what's happening, and people don't even understand. You have to break that down and, and go over it, believe you and me. Before I could say it properly, I had to go over it over and over again and understand exactly what they were talking about. So these people control the wealth and they are trying to keep you out of the negotiating table as the consumer. Why? Because Or the laborer rather. As you're going to see in these cuts that I'm going to show you at this forum or this government summit is that Klaus Schwab literally gives himself away by saying, look, the demand for labor is minimal. There's a low demand. So if there's little demand for the labor in today's economy, where is your place? Where is your equity? Where is your leverage? You want to talk about creating new equity? Where is your leverage? Where is your place at the table? Because if there's no demand for you and you are a laborer, where is the demand for you? If there's no demand, your value is very low. That's what they've done. They've created with this virus. All right, with this situation, this health situation, they've created an environment where the the demand for labor is low and therefore you have minimal leverage. You are out leveraged as a matter of fact completely. And these people the way they talk leave out all of their malfeasance in the past. And he's speaking with the same people who are responsible in many ways, there are people in that audience, I guarantee it, that are responsible for weapons dealings, drug trafficking, and human trafficking. And these are created from conflict abroad. So when we go in the name of capitalism abroad and, and all of these things, and we're blaming other people for stealing intellectual property or spying on their own citizens or anything else, you best believe we're doing that to our, our own people. That's that's happening to us. We're being propagandized like 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 uh, the Germans in the 30s and 40s. Not just us, a lot of people. And so when we lift this veil of consciousness, we see a little bit of light, the frequency of light shining in, and then we investigate, and that's what I'm doing. So these clips that you're going to see have to do um, with, with just that, some of these issues that I have. Um, and so these speeches are so important for more reasons than that, which you hear, rather what they do not say and leave out of the consciousness of the viewer. There are two main things that really just grind my gears about this gathering. Firstly, the omission of information is sickening. As Klaus speaks in a way that to the ignorant ear sounds like they have solutions for problems that your next door neighbor caused. 
So we're blaming each other, right? So for example, you will not hear Schwab confront the systematic societal problems or more importantly, the origins, the origins of these problems that they admit creates inequity and disease. And there's a hint here. He's talking to the people responsible for the inequity. They're sitting in the crowd, as I was mentioning. And it's possible that many Americans know that one of the main reasons we go to war is to support corporate capitalist interests and create wealth for those with leverage and exclusive access. Mr. Schwab may sound soft and caring and thoughtful in a way that brings peace of mind, but he doesn't talk about the wars waged in the name of globalism. And in his words, neoliberalism, what many do not realize is that globalist corporate wars facilitate the world drug, arms, and human trafficking trades and finance economies abroad into consumerism, which has proven to be bad for Americans' health. We can go over statistics for drug overdoses, depression, anxiety, overweight and obesity, if you really like me to, but I'm tired of repeating myself about it. The statistics speak for themselves. If you want to know about the virus and you want to know about the mask protocols that are being implemented based on uh, research that's come out, go look at these, these research articles because you're going to find many holes in them. You want to talk about the different vaccines that they have, the mRNA, the other, the various types that they have that, that, that inject brand new technology into you. Look it up for yourself. The statistics show for themselves. You are but to go look for yourselves to see the exact statistics of what's going on right now. And if you can use deductive reasoning and that awesome, uh, the, the, the skills that you were supposed to learn at your liberal arts college that you're your bunk professors taught you to which point 50% of you or us don't even work in the field that we studied in. So you learn all about these, these confirmation biases. And because you choose to be lazy and not do your homework, you can't take time to read and interpret uh, without a bias or with minimal bias. You can't apply that education that you learned because you finagled your way through a liberal arts school and you're doing some other job outside of the realm of study that you chose to do. So it's a bit of an inverse reality. I always love doing this because people are ass backwards a lot of times. All right, so if you look into the audience, a conscious person must then wonder how many of these elite individuals either directly or indirectly have profited from such trade. And most Americans do not know that our bureaucrats are directly involved in such dealings with the same individuals, devaluing taxpayer investment and undermining the promises made to the American citizen. And so what I mean by devaluing taxpayer investment, if we choose to do some kind of social program or we choose to invest abroad for cultural significance and influence, which we're paying right now, when you see these people, our politicians printing a crap load of money and sending it abroad or trying to get it passed to send it abroad, that's influence that we've been paying to keep the wolf away from the den. You know what I'm saying? And so that's the influence that we have abroad and we can't afford to pay it now. So we have to trick the taxpayer dollar into printing a bunch of money based on their fear and irrational beliefs of a bunch of bull crap that's been happening for a lot longer than this COVID thing since early 2000. It's been happening and planned for a long time. People like Klaus Schwab talk about exactly what's going on with this virus. All of them have. And they're all sick, sadistic people for it, in my opinion, because they deceive. They do these forums or these summits and you, the, 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 the unsuspecting consumer have trust and faith that these people can't possibly lie. Somebody will come out and say it. Well, I'm coming out and I'm saying it. These people are full of crap and they omit a lot of things from you. So we devalue the taxpayer investment. Their corporate globalists attach themselves to our projects abroad and they take a piece, they siphon some off. So it devalues our investment, right? And the undermining of the promises made to the American citizen, they have to subvert your consciousness and make promises to you pandering to your virtues using the, the corporate witchcraft and esoteric measures that I talked about in my last video with Joe Biden, where he used corporate witchcraft or the same thing that corporations use, where they'll send a lawyer in to a business and pander to the virtues of the, the employees triggering an emotional response to what they're saying. And so you can talk about an unconscious bias, even though, and how we have to walk around and, and be aware of it and work on it as a consumer and as an employee, when these people are the ones who are representing the corporation that what 
whose environment creates the inequity that, that perpetuates the unconscious bias that they're telling you that exists in you, we live in their environment that they created. Now here they are with Klaus Schwab talking about how they want to uh, you know, start the, uh, a new approach. To, to at the, we're at the crossroads. We need to go different directions. Okay, I don't want to go the direction that you, you've been taking us for, for centuries. Okay, These are people whose families have inherited wealth over time. And then they marry politicians and politicians marry people in the private sector. And then they switch vice versa. They do all kinds of crazy things and they're all related. They all intermarry and they're inheriting a massive amount of wealth. This is the deal that they're making with one another. And I'm not making this up. You can go and look for yourself. Who's married to who? Who's aligned with who? Mitt Romney, the Bushes, Obamas, the Clintons, Trump, you name it, all of these people, Paul Manafort, all these people, they were deep state guys too. It's not just the Democrats, it's all of them, right? So in any case, this is what I'm talking about when they subvert your consciousness and undermine your values, okay? They promise to you and use that that pandering as a vector to, to insert their witchcraft, to ins- insert a thought into your mind so that you think about it and carry that into the world and then perpetuate it and, and, and manifest it into the world to the people around you. It's like a virus. Ring a bell? Sound familiar? What's very contagious? Attitude. Even more so than of any virus. Attitude. I can reach anybody from around the world and create a different attitude in somebody. That's contagious and that's power. And that's the art of persuasion and manipulation and mind control through emotions. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the clips. I'm going to go ahead and provide commentary. I'll pause it and maybe try to reinforce a little bit about what I was saying. I wanted to go on script as much as possible with this video because I feel like I wanted to be as clear as possible. This is a very complex subject and I don't expect everybody who might watch the video to understand exactly what I'm saying, depending on your level of research and consciousness uh, and understanding of this knowledge that I'm presenting. We're going to take a look at a few of the clips. I'll do commentary and we'll see if we can provide um, uh, a little bit of clarity to what I'm talking about. Enjoy. Post sign. The other roadmap, which leads into the re-erecting of walls, into probably a world which is more anchored in yesterday, and a world which probably is characterized by fragility and hostility. I would suggest that we do not choose either of those two ways, but that we construct a new way, which is in line with the new world, which is unfolding. We should not argue in the context of yesterday. We should really first analyze how the world has dramatically changed and is changing in an accelerating way. Okay, great. So he's talking about the acceleration of change that's taking place. Little is he telling you that he's responsible for it to begin with. He wants to skip reflecting on the past. We don't want to learn about wisdom. Remember, we've been going through iconoclasm for how long? tearing down of statues. I understand some of them. I don't know why they were ever put up like these Confederate statues, all these like statues of people that I never understood it. I never liked it. I'm kind of glad to see some Confederate statues go down. Get the hell out of town. We don't want you. You lost. The spoils go to the rich and the riches go to the victor. Why do they get any moment of glorification ever? Ever, right? Anyway, I digress. He's talking about how we should not be upset. We shouldn't be quarreling and bickering about what's going on or what happened in the past, even though he and his counterparts are directly responsible for the way that things have gone in our lifetimes, our parents' lifetimes, and a part of our grandparents. These generations have been manipulated by these people. And this is what he's going... He sounds... He sounds sincerely, genuinely like he wants to make a positive change, doesn't he? It seems that way, and you'll see as we go. But before doing so, we should not forget the great benefits globalization has brought to mankind. One billion people 
have been lifted out of poverty. Our age expectations has increased substantially. As consumers, we have benefited from lower prices enabled by global supply, ch supply chains. All right, so he's talking and about how on globalism on has lifted a billion people out of poverty and the life expectancy has increased significantly. What he needs to tell you, if we're going to talk about poverty, we need to define it. And if he's going to define it, he's going to have to talk about how a lot of third world countries inhabitants can't afford the proper plumbing, health care, food. They're malnourished. They can't, they can't afford their own place. Yet they can afford their own cell phone. Why? Because corporate capitalists and communication companies that are in bed with these globalists, they want to pander to your emotions. They need to control you emotionally and predict your behavior. So they harvest your data and information and they use that data to determine what it is that makes you grind like or makes your gears turn all right makes you grind daily what motivates you and they will use these things to manipulate your mind and control your mind that's what he won't tell you in terms of people uh, increasing their life expectancy that's come at a huge cost we have a lot of baby boomers all right, not just in this country, I would assume throughout the world following World War II, all right? We have a lot of old people in the aging population and they know this. So what does that do to healthcare costs? It significantly increases the costs. The last time I checked, COVID's targeting old people. I'm not saying it's discriminating necessarily, consciously, but I guess you could kind of say it is, right? In any case, that's what he's talking about. Well, that globalization has created a new economic equation. Skills, labor is less in demand, which means if we look at the pie of GDP, the rent for labor is lower, and those who have capital, those who have new ideas, have benefited more from globalization. And for this reason, what we have seen in the elections, in the United States, in the Brexit vote, this anger of people against globalization and against the elites, which they feel have profited from globalization. Okay, so quick quick story on this. He's mentioning capital and ideas. Jeff Bezos goes in front of Congress earlier this year and they ask him if he was aware that a third party um, contracting company that he hired to provide services for new upcoming entrepreneurs with capital, that company was apparently taking their intellectual property and, and creating competitive uh, competing businesses, you know, to their, to their, the people that they were helping right? They do this. Most that uh, the early stages of a startup where entrepreneurs are undertaking risks to bring their products and services to market. Over the course of our investigation, we've heard directly from startups who rely on Amazon services. Uh, and that includes obviously Representative Jayapal's questions, Representative Buck, my colleague from Colorado, um, with respect to concerns about the way in which Amazon uses confidential information. Uh, but we've also heard that not just with respect to the marketplace, but Amazon's cloud computing arm, AWS, the notion that uh, that Computing arm essentially identifies startups' best technologies and rolls out replica products and services. Uh, so, Mr. Bezos, does Amazon use confidential information that companies share via AWS to build competing services? Uh, n n no, sir, not that I'm aware of. Uh, AWS does often, you know, they do keep expanding their services. AWS started, uh, you know, what, 15 years ago? Let, we let invented me, uh, this entire category. Let me just clarify that, Mr. Bezos. Uh, I appreciate that. Sorry, I, I apologize for interrupting. But um, last week, one of Amazon's former engineers posted online that he and his team, quote, proactively identified growing businesses on AWS, that they built competing products, and that they targeted those products to the business's customers. Uh, and there's been public reporting on that strategy. So I guess I wonder if you can comment on that and how you would account for uh, for those statements? Well, I think um, th there may be categories, you know, some uh, what, uh, databases of different kinds and so on, where we see that it's an important product for customers, and we make our own product offering in that arena. Uh, and but it doesn't mean we stop servicing the uh, the other companies that are also uh, making those products. We have competitors using AWS. 
So they're taking your intellectual property. They, they, they're suppressing your ideas with this, with this globalist effort of propaganda. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need desperately to figure out what I'm talking about. The media is bad and bad, all of them. Corporate media is a no-go. All right, continuing. So there's another change, probably more traumatic, affecting our lives. And we mentioned it last year and two years ago. It's the fourth industrial revolution. Many things, which I described in a book which was published one year ago, and which were looked at like science fiction, have become reality. So there's another change, probably more traumatic, affecting our lives. And we mentioned it last year and two years ago. It's the fourth industrial revolution. Many things, which I described in a book which was published one year ago, and which were looked at like science fiction, have become reality. And this country, Dubai, has been at the forefront, has had the mindset to really recognize the future. Congratulations. But the fourth industrial revolution will change our lives, will change how we live, how we consume, how we work, in even more dramatic ways compared to what we have seen. Last year, we were particularly captured, and two years ago, by drones, by self-driving cars. Now, artificial intelligence, new methods to manipulate genes are not anymore ideas, but they have become reality. Now, if we take all those changes, and I would like to add another change, a more political change, the world has moved from a unipolar power structure to a multi-power structure. And it's not only moving from one power to more powers, but it's also to moving from one concept, the Western concept, to many different ideas, how nations and global affairs should be managed.
So along those lines, do you think this is really the future of vaccine development is using this type of technology? I mean, the, the results are incredibly encouraging, right? I mean, this is the first time ever in human history there's been a vaccine developed within a calendar year. Uh, and, uh, and not only that, that, now it's actually been three, right? There have been three successful phase three clinical trials within a single calendar year. That, that's never happened for anything. I'm going to put you on the spot here, Professor Crotty. If you had a family member or a close friend um, say to you, you know, Professor, you've uh, studied vaccines and, and immunity your entire career. Um, uh, this vaccine looks promising, but it, you know, as, as you mentioned, the timeline has been so much shorter than what we're used to with vaccines. And it's using a new technology, this RNA technology. Um, should I be nervous about this? What would you say? Yeah, great question. Um, and, and the answer is no, don't don't be nervous. Definitely get vaccinated if you can get vaccinated. I mean, obviously, for one, right now, the COVID-19 threat in the population is 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 horrible. Right. I mean, we've. So what am I getting at? I have an issue with the world financiers, many of whom have corrupted world leaders and subverted constitutional sovereignty with false information and propaganda. This false sense of reality quarrels with the individual consciousness of those who the elite claim to be treated unfairly by the system. We're in a moment of enlightenment where generations of Americans have only known one way of life. And it turns out that this reality has been manipulated in a way that has led to blind servitude. More and more people are coming to the cosmic consciousness of the self where ideas are free of emotional manipulation and people are inspired to take action with or without capital. Just for future reference, fear blocks this energy, i.e. viruses, okay? Again, nothing is more contagious than attitude. All right, not even a virus. Klaus suggests that the idea of the elite are no longer ideas or science fiction. Rather, the ideas are here and they are reality. They have used their leverage and capital to undermine the intellectual property of individual citizens, which in the long run will ruin middle-class businesses, destroy the spirit of entrepreneurship, and most importantly, keep people away from the light of consciousness and thus their purpose. My diligence suggests that ignorance will keep the average consumer out of the deal that I believe is to come in the near future, and I don't believe that deal will come lightly. Every day we must educate ourselves, and that's what this video is all about. We need to be listening to these people because they are attempting to persuade through various methods and mechanisms and tools in their tool bag 
to manipulate you into going down a path that I believe will remove you from your spiritual consciousness, which is a gift from God. We must be willing to shine our little lights of consciousness into the darkness of the unknown without fear of getting hurt because what you will find may infuriate you. Thank you everybody for taking the time. We'll end on this note. Have a fantastic day. Do your research on what interests you. And at the same time, do research on your economic environment in which you live. If you do not know about the central banking system, you must know. If you don't understand the relationship between the Federal Reserve, which is privately owned, it's not a government entity, it's privately owned by people you don't even know. If you don't understand the relationship between the Federal Reserve, the U.S. Treasury, and the banks, then you are wrong and you are being highly misinformed and it's only your fault. I'm done blaming the media. The media is crooked. The media is terrible. I know this. A lot of people know it, but I'm blaming you. You, you, you. It's time to do your research. It's time to wake the hell up. It's time to hurt a little bit because what you're going to see, you're not going to like. You're going to hate it. You're really going to dislike it. For example, if you see Kanye West freaking out, I love Kanye. When you see an African American come to grips with the light, watch how he behaves. It's very difficult to control because you see the world operating the way that it actually does. And it's a tough, tough pill to swallow because people have gotten massively wealthy over very, very evil and dark things. And they've manipulated and deceived and lied and murdered and cheated and stolen elections, money, fraud, you name it. It's all happened and they've done it while keeping you preoccupied with euphoric, technologically advanced madness. Jeremy, Independence Channel, Real Truth, signing off. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the rest of your time. Have a great night.